Hello everyone, I am Michael Ruger. I am the managing partner of Greenbush Financial Group. The topic we're gonna be covering today is 401k cash distributions. We're gonna be talking about the taxes, the penalties, and some tax strategies you may be able to implement to lessen the tax burden if you have to go this route. It's not uncommon that if an employee unexpectedly loses their job that they get put in this cash crunch and they look to their 401k saying, I know I'm not supposed to take a distribution from my retirement accounts, but if I don't, I could lose my house, lose my car, not be able to pay my bills. So if you do have to go this route, the number of items that I'm gonna go over today are how much tax do you have to pay on that 401k withdrawal? What is the 10% early withdrawal penalty? The 401k 20% mandatory Fed tax withholding. When do you have to remit the taxes and penalties to the IRS? The 401k loan default issues, strategies to help you reduce the tax liability, and then pre-tax and Roth when you're taking cash distributions. When you terminate employment with a company, it triggers what's called a distributable event, which gives you options with regard to the 401k plan with that company. And there's three main options. The first one is you can take a cash distribution and pay the taxes and penalties. The second is you can decide to roll over your balance to an IRA or your next employer's 401k plan. And the third is if you have a balance over $5,000, you can elect to leave it in that 401k plan until a future date, and then you can do any combination of those options in certain plans. For purposes of this video, we're gonna be focusing on that cash distribution option. So if you take a cash disbursement from your 401k account, it's gonna be subject to federal tax, potentially state tax, and a 10% early withdrawal penalty. Now, I will assume most of your balance is pre-tax. If you have Roth within your 401k, I will cover that later on in the video. But assuming pre-tax money, if you take it out of your 401k, it's taxed at ordinary income tax rates, which is the same thing that your wages are taxed at. So if you take a $20,000 disbursement out of your 401k account, it's the same as if you got a $20,000 bonus in your paycheck. The most common question I receive is, how much tax am I probably gonna have to pay on this 401k disbursement? And the answer is it depends because it depends on your own personal income tax situation. Are you a single filer? Are you a joint filer? How much money do you expect to make this year? How big is this 401k disbursement? How much income is that gonna add? So you could have someone that's in a 24% Fed bracket, which they have to pay 24% Fed tax on that, let's say $100,000 401k disbursement. But then you could have someone else who's in a 35% tax bracket that has to pay 35% on that $100,000 401k disbursement. Regardless of your tax bracket, 401k plans have something called a mandatory 20% Fed tax withholding which means by law, 401k platforms are required to withhold 20% in Fed taxes. This is not a penalty. What they're actually doing is taking a portion of your 401k balance and remitting it to the federal government to be applied towards your Fed tax liability for the year. Now, they have no idea what your tax rate is. It's just that set amount for everyone. So let's say, again, you take a $100,000 disbursement out of your 401k account. They're gonna automatically take $20,000, 20%, send that into the federal government and you would get a net check for $80,000. And here's where people get into trouble because they know that Fed taxes have already been withheld on this 401k disbursement, they assume that that's enough to cover their full tax liability. But again, it's just a flat 20%. They have no idea what your tax bracket is. So if your tax bracket ends up being, let's say, 32%, when you go to file your taxes, they're gonna say, yep, you took the disbursement, they sent us 20%, but you still owe another 12% in Fed taxes that you have to come out of pocket for. So if it's on a $100,000 disbursement and you owe an additional 12%, you can owe an additional $12,000 when you go to file your taxes. So you really have to do your estimates here. Again, this 20% mandatory Fed withholding is not a penalty. They're just sending in that tax on your behalf and then it wrecks out come tax time. Now let's move over to state tax. If you live in a state like New York that has income taxes, that 401k disbursement amount could also be subject to state taxation. Some states do have mandatory state withholding that happens at the time of disbursements, 
but many do not, which means you just have to be aware of it. Like if you live in New York and let's say you're a 6% New York state income tax bracket and you take a $100,000 disbursement, you're gonna owe $6,000 to New York state come tax time and you have to be ready to pay it. We talked about Fed tax, we talked about state tax. Now we're gonna talk about the 10% early withdrawal penalty, which is over and above your income tax liability associated with these 401k disbursements. So if you're not of a certain age, when you take this disbursement from your 401k account, the IRS could tack on another 10% penalty. Here are the age ranges that you need to be aware of. If you were under the age of 55 at the time that you terminate employment, the 10% early withdrawal penalty will apply. If you are between the ages of 55 and 59, there is an exception rule within the 401k world that is not available in the IRA world that says if you're between those ages and you leave employment, if you take a disbursement directly from the 401k that you terminated from most recently, that 10% early withdrawal penalty does not apply. Now this only applies to the 401k that you just terminated from. It does not apply to old 401ks that may be sitting out there. So that's an additional restriction. A special note about this age 55 rule for 401ks. If you take your balance out of the 401k and roll it to a traditional IRA, that's a non-taxable event. But then if you try to take disbursement from that IRA prior to reaching the age 59 and a half, the 10% early withdrawal penalty now applies. You have now lost that exception, or if you took it directly from the 401k, that exception could have been granted. Once you are over the age of 59 and a half, you no longer have to worry about the 10% early withdrawal penalty, just the income taxation. So when you have to pay that 10% penalty, they do not withhold it from your initial 401k distribution. The penalty is actually due when you file your taxes. So you have to make sure you've set enough money aside to satisfy that future tax liability. Let's pull this all together an example. So let's say you take a $50,000 distribution from your 401k, you are age 45, you're in a 24% Fed bracket and a 6% state tax bracket. So the gross distribution amount is $50,000. Your Fed tax liability is going to be $12,000. Take out your state tax liability of $3,000 and then they're going to assess the 10% penalty of $5,000. So your $50,000 went down to $30,000. So you had to part with 40% of that balance in the form of taxes and penalties. This example also highlights something we just talked about, which if you took a $50,000 disbursement, they're gonna do the 20% mandatory Fed withholding, which is only $10,000, and it just showed you that you owed 20,000 between Fed, state, and the 10% early withdrawal penalty, so you better make sure you budget for that extra 10,000 that's still gonna be due when you go to file your taxes. There are tax strategies to help lessen the overall tax liability associated with these cash disbursements. Some of the ones we counsel clients on, the first one is trying to split it between two different tax years. If you're sitting here in December and you can take a portion in December and a portion in January, that's now splitting the tax liability between two different tax years as opposed to taking a all in one tax year, that could bump you up into a higher tax bracket. So if I could take, let's say I need 50, and I could take 25 in December, 25 in January, that might keep me out of an upper tax bracket. A special note about 401ks, many 401k plans are lump sum only, which means once you've terminated employment and you request a distribution, they say you gotta take it all or nothing. So this whole partial disbursement, if you wanna take a partial disbursement, you might wanna say, hey, send me the cash that I need and I'm gonna roll over the rest to my IRA and then once it's in the IRA, then you have full control and you can take that disbursement in January of the following year. The second strategy is really simple and straightforward, but it's take only what you need in cash. Like if you have a $50,000 401k account and you only need 20,000 to satisfy the short-term financial needs, take the 20 out, roll over the 30,000 to an IRA, that rollover is a non-taxable event, and if for some reason you end up needing that money, you can always go to your IRA because you have full discretion over distributions from that account. The third strategy involves avoiding that 20% mandatory Fed tax withholding associated with 401k cash disbursement. So again, I mentioned, any 401k disbursement, they're gonna withhold that 20% Fed tax and send you the other 80% for the net. That 20% that they send to the Feds for you that you never saw actually represents income to you. So you take a $100,000 disbursement, they send 20,000 to the Fed, you get a check for 80, 
$100,000 is what you have to claim as income for the year. So the idea is you take the 100,000, you roll it to an IRA, which is a non-taxable event, you take the 80 from there, IRAs don't have a mandatory 20% Fed withholding. When you flip into the next year and you get your tax liability, that's when you take the money out to pay the taxes. So essentially you push that extra 20,000 into the following tax year. The other situation this strategy works really well with is if you are below a 20% top Fed bracket. If your top Fed bracket is 12%, they have to withhold 20%. You would get a refund probably come tax time, but that means they made you realize more income than you really needed to because they're just gonna end up handing it back to you. So if you roll to an IRA, avoid the 20%, and then just take the tax money that you absolutely need to out of the IRA, it can lower your overall tax liability. Now we're gonna address the loan default situation. If you requested a loan against your 401k account and there's still an outstanding balance when you terminated employment or requested a cash distribution, that outstanding loan balance now becomes a taxable event to you. So you already got the money when you took the loan, never paid tax on it, but now that you're asking for a distribution, that full amount becomes taxable even though they're not sending you any additional money. So it can create some tax surprises. Quick example here, you have an $80,000 balance in your 401k plan, but you still have a 20 thousand dollar outstanding loan over and above that so when they do the disbursement it's actually going to trigger a hundred thousand dollar taxable event to you and when they do the fed tax withholding that mandatory 20 percent they're going to do it on a hundred thousand not on eighty thousand so sometimes people are surprised saying well i did the quick calculation and i thought it was going to get more because they did eighty thousand dollars times 20 percent it's like nope you got to do 100,000 times the 20% mandatory Fed withholding, and that's the net amount that they send to you. So this is usually one of the bigger tax surprise when there's a loan default associated with a cash disbursement. The last topic we're gonna cover are Roth sources within 401k plans. So if you've been making Roth deferrals to your 401k plan, that's treated differently than pre-tax because Roths are made with after-tax dollars. So if you have Roth money and you take a cash distribution, it's an early distribution, all the money that you personally contribute out of your paycheck is returned to you tax and penalty free because you've already paid tax on it. It's the earnings piece, what's that made while it was in the plan that's subject to taxes and the early withdrawal penalty. I hope this was helpful. If you have any questions, please feel free to reach out to me at moneysmartboard.com. Thank you.